Greetings everyone, I'm Adam Harriton. I'm out here at Raccoon Creek State Park in Western Pennsylvania. It's a beautiful state park. It's about 35 miles west of Pittsburgh, right on the border of Pennsylvania and Ohio. And I'm really excited because tomorrow I will be attending the Maple Sugaring Workshop. Now today I have the pleasure of interviewing the man behind the workshop. His name is Patrick Adams. And Patrick is the park environmental educator. I've known Patrick for many years. I've attended many of his workshops. He's very knowledgeable. And I'm really excited to be sharing his information today. Now for those of you who won't be able to attend the workshop, and by the time this video comes out, the event will have already taken place, hopefully this interview will inspire you to research this topic a little more. Perhaps you will tap your first maple tree this year, if not this year, then in future years to come. Thank you so much for tuning in. Really appreciate it. I know you'll enjoy it. I know you'll learn a lot. Let's go see what Patrick has to say about maple sugaring. All right, everyone, I'm back with Patrick Adams, the environmental educator here at Raccoon Creek State Park. Patrick, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Adam. So before we get started, why don't you tell us a little bit about Raccoon Creek State Park okay. and the work that you do here? Okay, um, I work here as an environmental educator and uh, primarily that entails having public programs, workshops, uh, school programs, things like that. Basically teaching people about the outdoors and history and, you know, a lot of a lot of different subjects so and you're leading the maple sugaring workshop tomorrow yes so I'm curious to know how did you get into maple sugaring what were your first experiences like were you taught this in school because I was never taught this in school and it seems like it's such a valuable skill to be able to procure your own sugar from your landscape mm -hmm. but I have a feeling your teachers probably didn't teach you this maybe you learned it on your own or through a book or a mentor yeah well um it goes back quite a few years because I first got into this when I was in high school and just uh, tried it on my own. So I really, looking back now, I was pretty naive to outright stupid uh, with some of the things that I, I did. But it was uh, that's how I got into it. So somewhere, whether it was school, a book, uh, maybe scouting, you know, the topic, maybe caught my interest and I was fortunate where I grew up I had my own little wooded area and had a camp I was always camping there for weekends and that's basically how I got started was uh, uh, found some taps uh, off of someone a long weekend I camped out and tapped some trees and blew them over an open fire on a, on a, a Dutch oven cast iron you know pot so pretty crude uh, as far as efficiency, but it worked. I basically uh, boiled it down enough to where it was sweet. Uh, but as I later found out, I wasn't even close to having it uh, boiled down enough to where it would, you mm -hmm. know, would keep. Uh, after uh, you know a lot of um, pancake breakfasts, lunch, and dinners, uh, you know, with a little bit left over after a month or so, it got moldy and you know didn't look so good. So, mm -hmm. but. I learned. Can you explain uh, which trees we'll be tapping tomorrow? Because I know the sugar maple probably has the highest concentration of sugar. Yes. But I don't think that's what we're going to be tapping. That's not probably no. what we're tapping right here no. either. No, sugar maple, boy, if you have that, you're, you're lucky. Uh, that'll work out real nice. That's the higher sugar content of the uh, seven maples that we have in Pennsylvania. And um, you're looking at somewhere between 2 to 2.5% uh, percent of sap would have sugar in it whereas the red maples uh, we're lucky to get uh, 1 to 1 1.5 um, you know that we get sh uh, sugar content from um, around here but that's what we have we have primarily red maples in this area and if we're new to tapping in the mm -hmm. winter time and we're looking for maple trees to tap mm -hmm. obviously the leaves aren't out yet the flowers aren't even out yet so what are some distinguishing features for any maple tree in the winter time uh, when we're going to be tapping so that we don't accidentally tap an oak tree or a mulberry right. tree. Yeah, that's the toughest part. You're primarily looking at buds, bark, and branching. So, um, you know, the maples are, you're kind of lucky because it falls into a small group that has opposite branching leaves or, uh, or branching. Um, so that's one thing. And then the other thing with the red maples, when they get older, of course, it's going to look a little different than this. but Generally, your, your 20 to 60 year old maples are going to have this kind of smooth texture to them. Uh, so you, that's really the first thing 
uh, if you're looking for it's, it sticks out the most and then from there you can kind of go into the branching and the buds um, and again if you got yourself a good winter field ID it's pretty easy at that point mm -hmm. but uh, and it is uh, a lot of areas in western Pennsylvania this is a, a very common tree so uh, luck out with that probably mm -hmm. more so at least in our area than, than the sugar maybe. Mm -hmm. so so not as efficient, doesn't have the sugar content, but uh, what that means is uh, simply that um, you're just gonna have to boil more water off than you would for a sugar maple. Okay. And we're averaging on these um, probably about 50, 50 gallons of sap to get a gallon of, of wow. syrup. Yeah, whereas uh, sugar maple, you're down around 40. So uh, I'm just gonna take a little longer, mm -hmm. that's all. And so Pennsylvania is in the Northeastern United States and mm -hmm. obviously, several indigenous cultures were tapping trees. Mm -hmm. Which cultures specifically were tapping trees here in Western Pennsylvania? And what do those early processes look like? Because they probably didn't have any plastic to right. use, maybe not even yeah. metal, but what, what did those processes look like and who was tapping trees here in Western Pennsylvania? Yeah, that's what, uh, it's, it's kind of even hard to comprehend that the, the amount of labor that went into it, if you were minus uh, metal tools, which the uh, indigenous the Native Americans, you know, in the Northeast didn't have, you know, prior to European contact. So, uh, when you start thinking about um, efficiency, um, you know, you're looking at a lot of work. Mm -hmm. Primarily what they did was uh, very different from drilling a hole in the tree like we do today. Um, they had a couple methods. One was where they would make sort of a chevron shape where they would kind of put, you know, stone dig it in deep enough that it would start to, you know, the sap would start to come out and then they'd have a collection uh, container underneath that that it would drip into. And sometimes they'd put a little sliver of wood, you know, where that bottom of the chevron, the V-shape met and it would drip off of that for a little more control, especially if you couldn't get a container close to the tree or hang it on there. Um, so that was primarily the only options they had. They didn't have the option to drill um, you know, like we have have today with, uh, with drills and you know, uh, metal metal bits. And as you said before, they would boil it all the way down to sugar. So maple yes. syrup is pretty much a new innovation as yeah, far as foods. Yeah, it really milk, wasn't until right? the late 1800s that uh, the whole syrup thing caught on. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it was just, um, um, you know, the whole thing with pancakes and things like that. That's relatively new. Uh, they were after they the didn't sugar. have pancakes. They didn't have pancakes. <laughs> no. If you think about it, if you got a liquid and you're in a you know Native American culture, pretty hard to keep that. Mm -hmm. You know, you gotta have something that's not gonna leak at all. Um, so they, they were kind of limited there, and and they pretty much uh, were after it like we use sugar for today as a as a seasoning. Mm -hmm. uh, keeping in mind that. Um, uh, honeybees weren't here at that time, so they didn't have anything sweet there. Um, uh, apples that we have today, which are very sweet, we didn't have in North America. We, we had crab apples, mm -hmm. you know, which are basically sour. So uh, the maple sugar was about the only sweetener uh, hmm. that the native peoples had in the, in the Northeast. Well, hey, I'm yeah. definitely looking forward to tomorrow. Um, yeah. Thanks for sharing all this information today. Sure. If anyone has any questions about Raccoon Creek State Park or wants to get a hold of you, what's the best way for them to do that? A um, couple options. One, uh, we do have a Facebook page. Just you know, look up Raccoon Creek State Park, uh, which is in southern Beaver County, uh, just a little bit uh, west of Pittsburgh. And uh, the other is um, in Pennsylvania, we have the, we're under the Department of <laughs> Conservation and Natural Resources, DCNR. Um, and there is a uh, calendar of events on, on that site that you can link to, as well as the direct link to Raccoon Creek State Park, and you can get my contact information and then also information on programs in the future. So. Yeah, and I'll link all that down below in the show notes for people okay. in Great. case they want to reach out mm -hmm. or check out this park if they've never been here before. Yeah. But thanks again, really appreciate you bet, it. Adam. Um, the workshops tomorrow, though, by the time this video comes out, already be too late. <laughs> <You> but <missed> <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, Patrick will inspire you to maybe research this topic a little more. Maybe you'll tap your first maple tree this year, and you can thank mm -hmm. him for that. Um, stop on by sometime. It's a great park, and I'll link all that information down below. But thanks again. Really appreciate it, and we'll see you soon.